everyone! I've been on Guam for a little over a year now and honestly there was a big difference between what I thought I knew to expect before moving and what I've actually experienced here. So I thought it would be a good idea to share with you some of the things that I've learned along the way. Whether you're planning on moving to Guam or you just wanna know more about what it's like here, here are seven things you should know about living on Guam. So I would like to just say that this isn't a definitive list and there are so many different things that I wanted to include in this video, but it would just take way too long. I don't think you want to see like an hour long video of me just talking. <laughs> okay, number one, driving in Guam. This one is like, I don't know, maybe funny. So for Guam, the whole island technically is 35 miles per hour, but law enforcement doesn't really enforce that. Like some people do follow the 35 miles per hour, but not a lot. <laughs> and honestly, I haven't looked at my speedometer in almost a year because it's really a free for all. Unless you're being a jerk, doing crazy maneuvers, or you're going like 80 miles an hour, most likely you're not going to get pulled over. So speed limit is pretty crazy. <laughs> Another thing, uh, they haven't happened too much recently, but there were a lot of traffic light outages when we first moved here, like a lot. And it is still technically the rule of like you treat it like a four-way stop nobody knows how to treat them it's just everybody tries to keep going as fast as they can until finally somebody just like moves in and then everybody in that lane stops and then the other traffic starts going 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 and it is terrifying also trying to find your way around is heavily on landmarks which worked out great for me because that's how i learned the road anyway like there are some but not on every street not on every road so when you get directions from somebody they're gonna say oh you know you're gonna see the Wendy's you're gonna keep going down for like a mile and then like you're gonna turn and it's gonna be right next to the coconut tree that's by that really tall building it's all about landmarks also one more thing about driving in Guam is that if you're gonna be relying on Google Maps to get you around, just beware. Google Maps is sometimes very inaccurate and you really can't depend on it. Like when we first moved here, we were looking for a pharmacy and Google Maps said that there was a CVS pharmacy, even though there's no CVS on the island, which we didn't know yet. And it took us down this really shady alleyway. And I was like, Joshua, this is like where we get murdered. We gotta get out of here. So driving in Guam, it can be a little, a lot. <laughs> Big tourist spots and things like that, Google Maps is gonna be perfectly okay, so don't feel afraid about that. Number two is gonna be cost of living. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this off with grocery shopping because that is a big one. It is gonna be different if you're just moving here versus if you are moving on base. I did see like a couple videos of people on base saying like a cart of groceries is gonna cost you $200, but just locally, like at the regular grocery stores, a full cart of groceries is gonna be about $500. I just spent $250 at the grocery store the other day shopping for the week, and it was maybe half of a cart, so that's what you're looking at. Pretty much everything that you see at the grocery store is gonna be double, sometimes triple the price of what you see in the States. An example is we like this one Dove body wash and this bottle in the States is $8 for that same size bottle. It was on sale from $25, I think, and it was on sale for $19 and something. Um, and it's the same with groceries. Fruits and vegetables aren't really that bad at all, but it's it's everything else it's gonna be meat it's gonna be dairy and alcohol oh my god don't get me started on alcohol that stuff is expensive so if you have somebody who has base access you might want to ask them to get you certain things from base some things just are not worth it to get at regular grocery store here i have heard that the reason why groceries and everyday products are so expensive is because Guam is still part of the Jones Act that only allows cargo that has touched a US 
stateside dock to bring in goods all the way to Guam. So it has to have touched like San Francisco or San Diego and then come to Guam. So it's, it's like super expensive that way. Also, apparently there's only like one or two shipping companies that does ship all of our goods. So they have a complete monopoly over Guam where they can pretty much charge whatever they want to. Okay, housing. Housing is surprisingly not that expensive. It's definitely a lot cheaper than California rent prices now and like buying a house and all of those things. And there are also other options. There's a ton of low income housing here on Guam as well. What you're really paying a lot for is AC. Guam, it's hot, it's humid. Some people can do it without AC and just like a fan, but I know there's a lot of people who just can't cut it. I enjoy being warm but sometimes you really just need that ac so realistically what we're looking at is there's not a lot of central heating and cooling in guam it's just units in each room our electricity bill if we have on all of our acs that's living room which is a big one and then all three bedrooms that is going to be about 700 dollars a month if we only have two or three acs on at a time that's going to be about 400 dollars a month and what the heck i thought i'd include it let's talk about inner Internet. you know we all want internet in our house so we currently have the best high-speed plan on Guam to date um, I have heard that they are working on better plans but currently the best package right now is hundred and forty two dollars a month for a hundred megabits per second. When we were in the States, we did help my mom beef up her internet and I'm pretty sure she got the same amount of speed, but her bill is about $50 a month. So that's like the difference. You are paying more for less here. Number three is gonna be pretty quick, but I thought it should be included, which is gonna be healthcare. For general physicians is relatively fine. We found a, a doctor that we really like, but it's just a fair warning, and I've been told this a lot since I've been here, that malpractice is still a very big thing in Guam. So it's always good to get a second opinion for anything that you might be experiencing. Also specialists for specific, you know, health needs are limited. We don't have a ton of specialists. So if you do have a specific health care need, you're most likely going to need to go off island to get that specific care. That's just a quick one, but I felt like it should be included. Okay, number four, animals and bugs. I was warned that there were some big bugs on Guam, but I don't think I really understood what I was getting myself into. <laughs> Spiders are huge and they are everywhere, especially banana spiders. They're these yellow guys and they are seriously like, I mean, that's like with legs. I mean, their body is probably like at the size of a quarter. Maybe, you know, the small ones are like a nickel. No spiders are poisonous. Nothing on the island is poisonous. They're just big and scary. And we've got these big, huge guys that are like really fast. I don't know what they're called. I can't remember, but like spiders. There's spiders everywhere and they're big and they're scary. Another thing is cockroaches. Cockroaches are here and they're here to stay. <laughs> when you have a nice, hot, humid climate, you know, cockroaches are gonna be present and they are not small, they are humongous. They are huge. Expect cockroaches, you're gonna see them no matter how clean you keep your house. You might see at least a few a year. Another thing that I probably, the one bug that I dislike the most are these teeny tiny red ants. They're like fire ants and they are an invasive species. They're not from here originally, but they definitely took over. They hurt so bad. When they bite you, like it burns so bad and it stings. For me personally, they leave huge welts that last for like weeks. So I, I really hate red ants. <laughs> um, mosquitoes, mosquitoes are abundant and they really love my sweet, sweet blood. I was getting so many all the time when I first lived here. That amount has gone down significantly. If I don't scratch it within like the first day, it just completely goes away and it's not as itchy and they don't bother me as much. So they really like newbies. <laughs> 
One that's not a bug, but a creature, is there's a lot of geckos here. So little, little geckos. They're so cute and I love them and they chirp and they get in your house. They're definitely welcome in my house. I love these cute little geckos. And one big thing that I really do like of the nature outside is the chickens. I love the chickens everywhere. That's probably a weird thing to say, but I didn't know that there were just gonna be loose chickens everywhere when I moved here. I love all the chickens. <laughs> okay, one big thing about animals is dogs versus cats. Here on Guam, dogs are king. They have the most supplies in the store, so you get a lot of options for dog toys and dog treats and dog food, whereas cats, not so much. We did have Mimi on a specific cat food, and we did find it here, but it's not always in stock. Sometimes it goes away for months, so we had to switch her cat food to something that they more likely would supply. One thing we've learned is that if you see the one item that you're looking for, get it and get multiple because you don't know when it's gonna be back in stock. So, I mean, dogs are set. They're settled, they've got everything they need. In the cat aisle, it's this sliver that like cuts through like, okay, the dog stuff is done, here's for the cat. One more thing about dogs that I should mention is that there are a lot of stray dogs or wild dogs here on Guam and <laughs> they are everywhere. Sometimes you'll just be driving down the road and you'll see packs of just 10 stray dogs. And just a side note about dogs or animals in general, if you're coming from the States, the way animals are treated here is not going to be the same. I was in shock when I first moved here and a lot of people keep dogs outside 24 seven on an actual chain leash that's very small and they can't go far and they're just out in the hot heat or the rain at night in the morning all the time. Just so you know, if you are moving here, this is gonna be something that you might see and you might see a lot, you might not. I have noticed that people are getting better with how they're treating animals and that animals are becoming more of a family member, but there are still a lot of people that don't see it that way and never have and weren't taught to treat animals that way. So it can be shocking. Okay, on to a different note. Number five is food. Not all food, but local food, which is amazing. It's so good. Specifically the barbecue. If you get to go to a full out barbecue, it's on another level. We got our Guam classics like red rice, finadeni, shrimp patties, or keleguin, which is meat cooked with lemon. And I'm, when I say meat, I mean any meat. Apparently you can keleguin anything. At least that's what my uncle Mark says. <laughs> there are big Filipino influences for food here, so that's always cool. But what you're pretty much gonna see at the barbecue, other than those Guam classics, is pancit. You're gonna have lumpia. Sometimes there's sushi, potato salad, and specifically, this barbecue chicken is just hits different. <laughs> I think it's a base of soy sauce, vinegar, and sugar, and then, you know, other spices, but it's just so good. So definitely, definitely check out the local food here. Okay, and number six is what I've learned while I'm here. So just a couple of quick, maybe helpful tips of what I've gathered while living here. First off, this is a big one that I haven't really seen anybody else talk about, which is, Maps. What I mean about maps is like physically drawing maps to your home. A lot of companies will ask you to do this. So I'm talking like when we had to get our power up, when we needed to get our water up, when we finally got our internet, you know, our trash. All of these different companies, they asked for a map to our house. And if you don't just have one to give to them, they ask you to draw it out. Joshua's mom finally just like, printed out like an actual like map to our house to give directions to these certain companies and she keeps spares in her purse because sometimes it's a company that you're going to that you just do not expect them to ask you for a map and sometimes they do okay so another thing it might be obvious but you're gonna be sweaty like <laughs> It's not necessarily hot. It's about 84 to 86 degrees regularly, but the humidity is so high. So, I mean, there are days that I don't feel hot, but I'm just sweating. And it was 
like that to an extreme when I first moved here. I did finally, after like six months, acclimate to the humidity. But before then, I was a sweaty mess. Like I was sweating sitting down. So I mean like walking somewhere, drenched. <laughs> One thing I would suggest is maybe bringing like a small towel or a handkerchief while you're here getting acclimated just so you can like, you know, wipe your face. Something that I did think was gonna be a bigger problem and seemed like a pretty big deal when I first moved here, but that's gonna be Amazon Prime. You can still use Amazon and get products shipped to Guam, but it is a very much smaller amount of items are gonna be available to you. And if you have Amazon Prime, you are no longer getting two day free shipping. One, it's not going to be two days. It's going to be about a week, maybe longer. And two, it's not going to be free. Even if you have Amazon Prime, your shipping is not going to be free. Each product does have a shipping fee. And if you're looking for something specific, it might not even ship to Guam at all. For me, it just didn't seem worth paying the fee to have Amazon Prime if the only benefit I was getting was their streaming service. So I did end my Amazon Prime subscription. Uh, I have heard a hack from other people that if you change your address to somewhere stateside while you're shopping, you know, a lot more things are available. And then when you go to your cart right before checkout, you switch the address to Guam and you still probably won't be able to get everything in your cart, but more things will be available. We've tried it a couple of times, only sometimes does it work, not all the time, but you can try it out. Let me know if it works for you. <laughs> and then one big lesson that I've learned while I'm here is that, you know, yes, uh, you know, Amazon Prime doesn't, you know, ship everything here. And yes, groceries are expensive. And yes, a lot of things are out of stock all the time here. When we get a shipment in, it's once a week and it's not always the same thing and it's not always the same product or brand or whatever. So, you know what? We couldn't get milk today. Milk was just not shipped to the island or, you know, there was a shortage or whatever. It's just not everything is always available to you here and it's not necessarily a bad thing you know it was very stressful at first but i have i've learned to make do with what i've got it's an island it's you know it's the trade-off of living on an island is that you know you're not always gonna have exactly what you need at exactly the right moment but you learn to accept that and make adjustments and make those adjustments fit to what you need it's a really like just easy going lifestyle and i've really learned to appreciate it and it's it's been really nice actually and maybe that's not for everyone but it really isn't that bad okay and lastly number seven this is what i just absolutely love about guam there really is no trade-off for the beauty of guam it's been a pleasure and a gift to live here for the year that i've been here because it is so beautiful the beaches are un matched. The water is crystal clear. It's warm and it's really shallow. Like you can walk pretty far out until you hit the reef and then it drops down. So I mean like I see people way out there just standing up. Um, you know there's like dips so like there's plenty of space to swim and snorkel or dive. There are currents that you do have to watch out for, especially north of the island, northeast of the island. Currents can get pretty strong at a certain time of year, so, you know, always watch out for that. Going back to snorkeling or scuba diving, there's so many beautiful fish everywhere. You don't even have to scuba or snorkel to see them. When you walk out one inch into the water, you already start seeing fish because of that clear water. And they're so beautiful and they're so so many there's such a huge diversity of fish that i've never seen before it's probably my number one i love the beach i've always loved the beach and now it's just like such a magical experience going to these beaches here the other thing that i love about guam which you know kind of goes with it are the views the views are spectacular sometimes joshua and i just plan a day to drive around the island we do it maybe once a month just to kind of ground us and show us a again like this is where 
we live. We're on an island, this beautiful, beautiful island. So whatever's going on in the world, like it's gonna be okay, like we're okay, whatever stress or little thing that we freaked out about or whatever, like let's put it to the side and, and really just admire what we've been given. It's incredible to see such a dense blend of so many different terrains because you have these beautiful, beautiful beaches and then these beaches hit this lush jungle filled with, you know, coconut trees and vines and fruits and all of this stuff. This dense jungle opens up to these beautiful mountains that also have scattered patches of red earth that the sand is this beautiful color of red and there are trails and and just pockets of them and it looks so beautiful and then all of this mixed in with some incredible cliff sides and it, it's it's one in a million. It's really just absolutely gorgeous. I'd say that, you know, living in Guam does come with its certain frustrations or, you know, you can't get what you want right away and, you know, whatever, but like, it's so beautiful here. If you don't want to live here permanently, it's always good for a visit. You know, come to Guam. It's beautiful. The people here are wonderful as well. Everybody, because it's such a small island, there's such a huge sense of community. So that that is my list of things that I didn't know or that I learned throughout my year here in Guam. I hope you learned something. I hope you'll visit. And if you're moving here, woohoo! And I hope that, you know, some of these things maybe helped you out to get maybe a better understanding of what's coming for you. All right, I'm outside now. Thank you all so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!